So this example we're going to do is going to be really similar to the last one. The only difference really is that theta is, has to be in radians this time. So I'll show you just a slight difference when theta is in radians. We're still going to do most of the question in degrees. You just have to make sure the answer is in radians at the end, okay? Um, yeah, so we'll go straight ahead. So find the general solution to sine theta is equal to a half. So we'll start with the first step in the method is to say, so all right, sine theta is equal to a half. And that means theta is equal to the inverse sine of a half. Okay, pop that into your calculator and you'll find that theta is equal to 30 degrees and also that it's equal to pi over six radians. So the way you do that is you just change the settings in your calculator. There's a button that'll change it from degrees to radians and then you just stick in sine inverse of a half again and you'll find what it is in radians. <clears throat> so it'll just save you time later. So remember, this is our reference angle. Reference angle. Yeah. Um, so the next step then is I'll go dark blue. Okay, so we have sine theta and it's positive. So I'm going to draw a little thing out here. I'm going to draw just a small circle, the four quadrants. So A, S, T, C. So which one of these is sine positive? It's positive in the first one because all of them are positive in the first and it's positive in the second because sine is positive in the second, okay? So that means, just write that down in words. So sine positive in first and second quadrant. Okay, so you have to, again, you have to write that sentence in your exam. So those are the first two steps. Now the third step, uh, we'll go purple. Okay, so now you have to apply this 30 degrees to our circle here. So I'll draw another one. Okay, so the first one, uh, I guess I'll draw a circle here. Yeah. I'll go green. So the first one is gonna be 30 degrees. So it's 30 degrees in the first quadrant. Nope, I'll just do that, change that a little bit. Like that. And the second one is 30 degrees in the second quadrant. The way you draw that is like that, okay? So here we have 30 degrees there and 30 degrees there. And this is what I mean by kind of doing the question in degrees, and then we're gonna change it at the end to radians just because it's more awkward to write pi over six radians like that. Most people don't think like that, they still think in degrees, okay? So those are the two angles. Now remember, we always have to measure them though relative to the positive x-axis. So we're gonna have this angle here, which is handy enough, that's just going to be 30 degrees. And then we have another angle here, which is this one, okay? So I'm gonna write that theta is either equal to 30 degrees, or the second one is gonna be 180 minus 30, because it's 180 is the uh, straight line. That uh, means this one is gonna be 30 degrees less than 180, it doesn't quite reach 180. So theta is equal to 180 minus 30, which is equal to 150 degrees. Okay, that's this step done. And now um, there's one one extra step in this video just because we have to, I'll go light blue, uh, change it into radians. So that means theta is equal to, so I'm gonna write 30 degrees is equal to pi over six radians, or else theta is equal to 150 degrees is equal to how many radians is the question, okay? So just write radians there. So there are two ways of doing it. You can either write 150 into your calculator and then press the button, there's a radians button, so it'll change your calculator settings from degrees to radians, and that should give you how much 150 degrees is in radians. Um, if you don't have the calculator with you or if that function isn't on your, on your calculator, then I'll show you how to do it the normal way. So we have like, covered this in um, one of the videos a few videos ago. So what we're gonna start with is we always start with 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Yeah, so this is the method to change degrees into radians. I'm gonna divide both sides by 180 because we want degrees. So 180 over 180 is just one degree, and this will give us pi over 180 radians. Perfect. Now we want 150 degrees, so I'll do it in dark blue. That means 100, multiply both sides by 150, and we're gonna get 150 pi over 180, so the 150 goes on the top. Put that into your calculator and it'll simplify down to 
5 pi over 6 radians. Okay, so um, I will just get rid of that. So 150 degrees is equal to, like we said, 5 pi over 6 radians. So now we're almost done. We have to remember though we're looking for the general solution, not just the first two solutions. So the general solution, um, we're talking about a uh, function of sine. Remember the period of sine or how often it repeats itself. So repeats and period. Oh, that's supposed to be a D. There you go. Every two pi radians, yeah, or 360 degrees. But because we're talking about radians in this case, we have to remember that it's two pi. So that means our answer. And I'll do it in what color? Finish in orange. Our answer is going to be theta is equal to. So let's go a little bit. Pi radians. Or so pi over six plus n by two pi. Okay. Or five pi over six plus n by 2 pi. Because remember, 2 pi is the period of sine. So it can repeat itself every 2 pi. So you have to add in plus n by 2 pi so that it uh, gets every single solution that's possible um, all the way up to, I don't know, like a million radians. Just keep going up and up and up and up every time as long as n is an integer. Yeah, so if you want to um, get clear on that, the last video kind of explains that a little bit better. But uh, this is what I'm just showing you the example. So after this, we're going to start moving through them a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, it's just a general idea. Yeah. So hopefully that video made sense. That's how to do it in radians. So I'd kind of do it. So the first step, sorry, is to find your reference angle. The second step is always to find where uh, your answer is positive or negative, depending. So which quadrants it's in. Then you draw those angles into the quadrants. Find your two angles and then find your general solution. So that's just a quick summary of the video. Uh, we'll see you next time for more trigonometric equations.